Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Somos Biology. In this video lecture, we are going to talk about mRNA 5' prime capping. In this series of lectures, we are discussing about the post-transcriptional processing of eukaryotic mRNA, okay, which are also known as post-transcriptional modification. And there are a few things that we will discuss in this whole series. One is this 5' prime capping, then 3' prime polyadenylation, then RNA editing, We'll talk about RNA splicing. Although RNA editing is not exactly in that sequence, it's something which is different. But basically, RNA splicing, uh, the cell splicing, as well as spliceism, editing splicing, five prime capping, three prime polyadenylation, RNA editing. These are the four important uh, processes that we'll actually look upon this throughout of this series, the four separate video series. This is the first video, first lecture on five prime capping of RNA. So what we are going to do here is basically. Alright, so we'll be talking about the 5' prime capping of eukaryotic mRNA. You know, uh, in eukaryotes, the process after transcription is a little complicated than compared to the prokaryotes. Because in prokaryotes, we have simple transcription, that is from DNA to RNA, and then from RNA to protein. There is no midpoint journey after transcription and translation other than anything uh, in between. But in eukaryotes, the mRNA which is produced after the transcription needs to be modified they needs to be mod they need to be modified what kind of modification we are seeing this modification are known as post transcriptional modification okay so this post transcriptional modification is very very important in order to make this mrna accessible uh, just before the translation or protein synthesis event very very important so whenever we are talking about 5 prime capping 3 prime polyadenylation or talking about splicing these are all meant for eukaryotic mrna eukaryotic system not in prokaryotes remember that in mind this is the very first thing that you need to know now the second thing is that we are talking about different modification why they are called post transcriptional because the modifications are done after the transcription event okay the very important concept here is to understand the location of individual events the location of uh, 5 prime capping, polyadenylation, the location of transcription, you need to have a very clear idea about it. Remember, the transcription event occurs. So, the mRNA is produced after transcription, right? And the transcription occurs inside the nucleus. So, the location is nucleus. And right after the transcription, the 5 prime capping, 3 prime polyadenylation, all these post transcriptional modifications, those are also done where? inside nucleus so these two things are very important all the processes are done inside the nucleus and right after all the modifications are done so mrna is being transcribed in the nucleus then the mrna will be modified in both the terminal let's assume this is the 5 prime side this is 3 prime side of the mrna the 5 prime side will be modified by capping we'll attach a cap here and 3 prime side will be attached with Polyadenylation means multiple A at the end of the 3 terminal. Both the ends of the mRNA are being modified. And all these modifications are done again in the nucleus. Okay. The location of all these processes are inside the nucleus. And why do you need modification to the mRNA which is just produced after transcription? Now, there are different, uh, you know, there are different theory based on uh, this idea that this 5 prime capping what is the importance of 5 prime capping what is the importance of 3 prime polyadenylation and we can say one thing that this there is no strict or, or single answer to it many scientists believe that the 5 prime cap protects the 5 prime end of the mrna from being degraded similar thing to the 3 prime polyadenylation protects the 3 prime of the mrna from being degraded by the exonucleases and also it was found out that the 5 prime capping and 3 prime polyadenylation significantly increase they significantly increase the uh, stability of the mrna right after transcription and also they are involved in the process of uh, the transcription the process of translation in a better way if they are modified in the 5 prime and 3 prime ends so these are the reasons we have post transcriptional modifications in the eukaryotes which is unique to eukaryotes not found in prokaryotes because they don't need that thing here. okay so now when we are going to discuss about this particular phenomenon here that is a 5 prime end 
of the mrna right after transcription remember one thing once the transcription is done the mrna is produced that particular mrna will be termed as there will be known as the pre uh, edited mrna or premature mrna rather so that premature mrna need to be mature enough in order to be exported inside uh, to the cytosol from the nucleus to the cytosol outside of the nucleus and once the modifications are done we call it mature mrna so modification means both capping and polyadenylation so now you understand why capping is important why polyadenylation is important now it's time to understand every single stages of five prime capping how it's done okay but one more thing that i must tell regarding the five prime capping and three prime polyadenylation that i already stated what i can say here is that uh, there are three important features three important roles a five prime capping or a three prime polyadenylation plays inside a eukaryotic cell for the eukaryotic mrna and you can easily remember this using this esp just remember esp to understand the importance of five prime capping and three prime polyadenylation e for export export okay export of this mrna from nucleus to the cytosol s for stability stability and p e for export s for stability both are very very important and uh, so both are the export is very easy if there is modification like 5 prime capping 3 prime polyadenylation stability is increased whenever the modifications are done the stability is increased and p is for protection protection of the particular mrna end either 5 prime end or 3 prime end 5 prime capping gives protection to the 5 prime end 3 prime polyadenylation protects the 3 prime end of the mrna in eukaryotes as simple as that so now you know esp we'll move to the steps of mrna 5 prime capping how it's done here are the steps listed five separate steps are listed here starting from pre mrna processing means basically the mrna which is just transcribed we need to process this mrna we need to make this mrna ready for the process of five prime capping then comes the role of three important enzymatic stages you can see the first enzyme is rna triphosphatase second one guanylyl transferase third one guanine 7 methyl transferase three separate enzymatic step and three separate reactions are performed then last step is 5 prime cap binding complex so that they can bring this edited form of the mrna not edited we should not say edited but modified form of mrna or processed form of mrna to the cytosol so this is a part of post transcriptional mrna processing post transcriptional because it occurred right after transcription mrna processing means we process the pre edited form a premature mrna which is produced and we modify it then we take it from nucleus to the cytosol okay so the very first step is the pre mrna processing here what we need to make sure is that the mrna is properly produced transcription is completely done now the question is do the cell wait until the transcription of complete mrna is done or they initiate the 5 prime capping right after the 5 prime gets produced the answer to that is yes the mrna right after the 5 prime is produced they can initiate the 5 prime capping modification yes it is found in many cases that to save time because the by the time the mrna is being produced because uh, when the mrna is being produced 5 prime produces first then continue to produce till 3 prime end right so the moment 5 prime is produced they start modifying the 5 prime end it is ready so what kind of modification we are going to talk about now remember in any in any particular nucleotide sequence dna or rna in this case we are looking at rna right what we have in the five prime we generally have, we have three phosphates in the five prime right three phosphates are attached to the five prime end and the three prime end contains a hydroxyl group oh right so three phosphate uh, in the five prime end one hydroxyl in the three prime end this is a very basic structure so the very first step of the mrna five prime capping is involved with the enzyme rna triphosphatase why triphosphatase because this enzyme acts 
only when there are three phosphate groups are present. Remember that. That's why the enzyme's name is RNA triphosphatase or mRNA triphosphatase. Phosphatase enzyme's job is to cut phosphate groups out, right, in any reaction. So here are phosphate groups. How many? Three phosphate groups are there. So the triphosphatase will cleave phosphate groups out. How many phosphate groups will be cleaved? In this case, one of the phosphate group will be cleaved. So the, the terminal phosphate that is present there will be cleaved out. That's the step performed by RNA triphosphatase enzyme. Cleaves one phosphate group out. So after this process, what we have, we end up with 3' prime hydroxyl, no change in that. And two phosphate groups are ultimately present to the 5' prime end. Okay. Then comes the second enzyme, guanylyl transferase. This enzyme guanylyl transferase attaches guanosine monophosphate. Okay. GMP. Guanosine monophosphate. So it has a phosphate group attached. But this attachment will be done in a reversed fashion. Right. So let's say in very simple words, if I draw something like this phosphate groups that are attached like this. So the guanosine one will be attached in the reverse way like this. In the reverse way. So guanyl transferase attaches GMP, guanosine monophosphate, inverse the GMP and attaches it to the 5 prime 2 phosphate. Remember the two phosphates are already present. The another phosphate is now attached. GMP, the G is now inversely related and capped at this moment. So this is how inverted form of GMP is attached and catalyzed by guanylyl transferase. Guanylyl transferase because you transfer GMP in this case. Then the third step of enzyme reaction here is modification to this G or guanosine which is attached here. Modification to the G will be done and the enzyme is guanine 7-methyl transferase because it will modify the guanosine residue at the 7th carbon position, the 7th position and they attach a methyl group to the 7th carbon position here. So, so methyl group is attached to the 7th carbon position known as guanine 7-methyl transferase enzyme. Guanine 7-methyl transferase enzyme transfers methyl group to the 7th carbon position of the guanosine. In that way, it's going to complete all the enzymatic steps of the 5' prime capping. Once the steps are done, then comes the 5' prime <coughs> cap binding complex. So there are a set of proteins in eukaryotes which we will not talk about here, it's not that important for the exams, but those set of proteins, they cover up this 5' prime end, they protect the 5' prime end and allows this 5' prime modified mRNA to be escorted out of the nucleus into the cytosol for the later stages of uh, central dogma, that is translation. So all these three steps are important, so there are total 5 steps, remember the RNA triphosphatase is very important why because without tri triphosphatase the end of 5 prime will not have two phosphate phosphate group needs to be cleaved out because ultimately this mrna or dna whatever it is it will not be allowed to have more than three phosphate in the 5 prime end so we need to modify the 5 prime end anyhow which is done by RNA triphosphatase then the guanylyl transfer is attaches gmp to the 5 prime end and that is the cap that we're talking about and as this GMP is attached to the inverse uh, structure, the link is inverse, so they cannot be degraded or cleaved by the exonucleases. What are exonucleases? Enzymes that can cleave nucle uh, nucleotides from the terminal side, 5' prime or 3' prime terminal side of the RNA, which cannot be done here because of this inverse in binding of GMP to the existing uh, bisphosphate here okay and then the last part is the methyl transferase the addition of methyl group that further stabilizes the 5 prime cap and the binding of 5 prime cap binding complex allows the escorting of the mrna 5 prime mod cap modified mrna to the cytosol in order to initiate the process of translation so these are all the important steps of 5 prime capping 5 prime capping in eukaryotic uh, mRNA processing after transcription. That's how all the steps are done in this case. And remember why it is so important? Because of the three important features, export of the mRNA to the cytosol, protection to the mRNA 
and stability to increase the stability of the mrna once transferred to the cytosol because the moment rna gets transferred to the cytosol there's a chance of rna degradation because the turn of uh, nucleases will be there which can degrade the mrna but to prevent it five prime capping plays a very important role okay so these are all the steps of five prime capping what is five prime capping how the five prime capping is done and the enzymes involved in the five prime capping of eukaryotic mrna processing i believe you have a clear understanding of this topic if you got a clear understanding please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that and in the next lecture we are going to talk about the second post transcriptional modification here and that is 3 prime polyadenylation which is equally important to understand which also is responsible for stability to the rna so let's see that in the next lecture but for for now this is it thank you